Welcome back! All right, so let me show you how you build a level in GB Studio, right, for the platformer. There's a couple of new things. You might know a bunch of stuff if you're not new, but I think it'll still help you out. So check it out. If you go to sprites it's over here on the right side, we see all the basically the sprites that we have in the in the game. And of course, if we go to backgrounds, we see all the backgrounds. Now, the thing that might confuse you is, wait, why is this all green, right? How is it green? But when we go to the game world, it, it has color. I am confused. By the way, look, there's a little hide layer here where you can hide the objects. So the way that that the level has colors is that you don't add colors in when you draw the the sprite what you actually do is you paint in gb studio so here you can see there's a bunch of palettes near the top right and check it out i can paint over a bunch of uh a bunch of this stuff you see that i'm changing the the colors here and color palettes have to be um with four colors so whenever you're creating an object that has to have four colors but every one of your objects is going to have four colors because in game boy in gb studio an object can only have four colors let me explain. If you go to if you go to GB Studio, there's docs here, and a lot of the stuff that I don't explain, you can read in the docs here. But really quickly, let's just go to sprites. So here, if we go to sprites, you can see that you can only have four colors, and these are the four colors that any one of your sprites can have. But what GB Studio is doing is it's replacing those four colors with different color palettes. You see that? That's kind of cool, and you can have multiple color palettes in one drawing so you're just going to be coloring over your shades of green but now how do we make color palettes right so down here in the drop down there's a new thing here called palettes and check it out there's a whole bunch of built-in uh palettes in gb studio well how do we add a new one you just hit a plus on the top right here and boom we have a new palette palette 22 how do you remove it you click remove palette oh my gosh you guys can't see it because i'm on i'm on the wrong side that's better a cool thing about the palettes is that you can always go in and adjust them that's pretty nice. All right, so now how will we draw the level, right? So something that you should be wondering is how big can you make your platformer level? I asked the developer and he said the new maximum size is 2040 by 2040. So actually you can make your level a huge square, which would be awesome for a Metrovania. It doesn't have to just be this super, you know, typical Mario long level. So you can use whatever software you want. And you know, you would go 240 by, I don't know, whatever, let's just say 1000, but the maximum height is 240. And then boom, we have, we have our level here and you can go in here and look, I have the grid here and you can draw, you know, every single thing here, copy pasting in, in a Sprite. That'd be kind of tedious and there's better software than a Sprite for building your level. By the way, if you want to get Ace Sprite, there's a link in the description and I'll get like a tiny little kickback if you use that link to get Ace Sprite. So a better software for building your level once you draw your tiles is tiled. It's free and basically it has a bunch of cool uh, features where you can create brushes to paint out stuff in, you know, when you're designing your level. Another option is Ogmo. I haven't really used Ogmo, but it seems like it's pretty good. It's almost simpler than tiled. This one might be pretty fun. And another option is Pixel Edit. This one, you can draw pixel art in it and it has the tiling thing. So actually it's a cheaper option to A Sprite and you can have the whole tiling feature. So in a way it's a little bit better than A Sprite. It's really tough to choose between A Sprite and Pixel Edit if you are only to choose one program, but of course I own both. <laughs> So for example, in pixel edit, let's say I went to file new over here. It asks you how many tiles you want. So you have to divide 240 by 16 divided by 16 and we get 127.5. Of course, we're not going to put a 0.5 in there. So let's just do 127. So here, if we do 127, we can see that it's uh, 2000 right here. We can see it's 2032. So you don't have to have 16 by 16 tiles in GB Studio because the background is just one big PNG image. But for the sake of everything looking kind of cohesive since all the sprites, all the objects are 16 by 16, I think having the tile in the background be 16 by 16 makes sense. So boom, here we go. We created this level. You can see uh, we have a grid here. And the cool thing about Pixel Edit is that let's say I draw, let me just draw something really quick. So I drew a, 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 a crappy tile here for the ground and there's a button here to create tiles. And if I hover, if I hold control and I left click this, it added a tile over here. We can see that the tile got added. This one's blank. So I'm just going to delete it. But now we have one tile. And if I use this tile tool, now I can draw 
Now I can draw my level, you know, let's say I'm doing a platformer level, I can use this now as a tile. And the cool thing is that if I ever change this uh, tile, so let's say I wanted to, um, I don't know, whatever, make some of these longer. Look, it updates all of them. And you don't get that in a spray as far as I know, and you cannot edit the pixel art in tiled, you have to import the uh, your tiles into tiled. So the cool thing about pixel edit is that at any point in time, you can go and edit the tiles, which makes it really easy to make sure they all fit and stuff like that. Okay, so you see how I made a corner tile here, I'm going to hold control again, click on that. And you can see here that I created this tile, by the way, you can rearrange the tiles here, um, which is pretty cool. And then what you do is when you go to file, export, um, you can export the entire image, which is what we would export uh, if we wanted to put this level into GB Studio, or we would just export the tile set if you wanted to export this thing right here, the tile set, if you wanted to use that in tiled, or if you wanted to use that in any other level building program. A common question I got is, okay, well, after I draw my level or sprites, how do I import it into GB Studio? You actually don't. What you want to do is you want to go to the folder. <laughs> you should remember where you created your game project. You want to go to the folder. And when you're in the folder, you go to assets. And here, depending on what you're trying to put into GB Studio, whether it's a background, music, sprite, or UI, you have to drag the file in here. So for example, let's say we go to backgrounds here, we can see all of the backgrounds in our game and just drag and drop your PNG files from your desktop or wherever you're saving it to in here. Or what you can do in the software that you're using to draw the art is save directly into this folder. Now what you do is you go to back to your game world and you hit this plus button and here you can create an actor trigger or scene. And what we want to do is create a scene. Think of a scene as a level, but you can also use it for a cutscene, whatever, you know? So pick a spot. I would probably do these in, in order. So I'm going to put this one uh, under it and then call this whatever you want. So let's say this was our level one. We're just going to name it level one. And this is very important. The type is not top down 2D. You have to switch it to platformer. And then once you switch it to platformer, it's the option right under it is to choose a background. So this is where you would probably save, you know, your level S level, your, your PNG file, name it something like level one so that all the names match. I'm just going to go to the existing one that was in this project, which is uh, called platformer path. And boom, there it is. There is our level. And now you can go in here and and color it. It's going to be just shades of green. So remember the option down here gives you a bunch of color palettes and just go in and let's say you want this to be green, you know, you color that green, uh, have fun with that. <laughs> you can even have the same. The cool thing is you can have the same sprites and color them different things. So let's say this was like, um, our first level, right? We could literally make a, the second level, um, use the same sprites, but just color them different. And all of a sudden it looks like a desert level. You see that? So it's kind of a cool way to create different levels just to recolor them different, feel, make different biomes or whatever. Super quick tip. If you get an error, when you try to run your game in your level, you probably did something wrong. There's limitations in GB studio. So if you literally come here and you try to draw your level like this, none of these tiles are repeating. So uh, if you don't repeat tiles, there's not going to be enough memory in GB Studio to run your game. So you really want to repeat as many tiles as possible. Don't just go here and freehand draw your entire level. It's there's not going to be enough memory in GB Studio to run that. Let me explain that real quick. This tile right here takes up memory in GB Studio. And if I repeat this over and over and over again, it's not taking up more memory. However, if I go here and I create a new tile and make this one different, every time you create a unique tile, it takes up memory and you can't have too many unique tiles in GB Studio. You see how these clouds here are reusing the same tiles. They're not, they're not unique. That's basically what you want to do. Just try to reuse tiles as much as possible. Once you build your level, you want to add collisions. So go over to the wall and here you have different size brushes. So we have a little brush and we have a big brush. We're just going to go with the little brush. The red is basically solid all around. So for example, this ground, we want it to be solid, right? Don't forget to, by the way, do the edges as well so that your character doesn't go down, <laughs> down here. If you make a mistake, like you add solids here, it's not really going to break the game or anything, but you can go ahead and go to the eraser tool and erase these because they are, you know, whatever that is kind of necessary. 
So there's a bunch of different colors here and you might want be wondering what they do. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what it does. So this one says, the blue one says collision top. You want to use a collision top when you want the character to be able to jump in from underneath but land on top, right? So a perfect example of where we would do that is right here. We want the character to be able to run underneath, jump, but land on it when the character jumps from underneath. And then the, there's this green one, which is a ladder. This is kind of cool. If you go to the colorize option, you can click the eye icon and it'll toggle all the collisions in your level if you kind of want to, you know, just see what your level looks like without all of these collisions on top. So if I wanted the player to be able to jump on clouds, I could also go ahead and, you know, add these to the clouds. You can have a lot of fun with this stuff. And it's awesome that you can edit it so easily. All right, guys, start making some awesome levels. I think in the next one, we're going to try doing a couple of different enemies. I'm currently unemployed and the amount of money that I'm making off of YouTube is pretty pathetic, honestly. So basically my livelihood is going to be the Dwerve Kickstarter and I'm not the only one working on it. So it would be greatly appreciated if you guys would be willing to support the channel by just, you know, playing by buying and playing one of my games. Like that's that'd be awesome. Thank you all. And uh, I don't know what else to say.